Okay, so we have been fueling speculation on the new Paul McCartney album. Uh, earlier, I had talked about, you know, the big guess that we were going to get something this week. I said Carpool Karaoke was Thursday, which today is Thursday now. Carpool Karaoke will be tonight with James Corden. Super excited to watch that. I said they're going to put out something. They have to. You got to capitalize on all this buzz that's going on. Turns out we got it a little early just yesterday. Paul McCartney released uh, his double, double, a, not an A and a B side single, double A, two A side singles on one single release. So we got two new tracks from uh, Sir Paul McCartney, uh, which I'm really, really excited to share with you guys right now on Breakfast with the Beatles. But um, just to go over essentially what what's going on, just to fill in the news on this one. Uh, we're not going to get the album until the fall, and it is going to be called Egypt Station, which I think is a pretty cool, interesting name. Certainly is some unbelievably interesting artwork to go along with that, uh, which I really love. Which, by the way, is the good. And and let me just say this: in the and in the world of social media, and a lot of people are complaining, and I hate Facebook, and I hate Twitter, and I. Uh, I mean. You, I find this is what I think. People don't hate the platforms. People just get tired of the people misusing the platforms. Because if you're a fan of Paul McCartney, it was exciting as all hell to follow him on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram over these last couple of days. As he was, you know, changing artwork and just putting out little tidbits of information here and there. Like, it was, it was exciting. It was exciting to follow along. I get that, you know, Aunt Ella is really irritating and Uncle Billy won't stop posting political stuff. I get it. It's very annoying. But, you know, it is also really cool when you get down to this. Like, we had a totally immersive experience with Paul, you know, as he readied this material for us, which I think is great. So going back, I said we we're going to get some new material on Friday. Turns out we get it on Wednesday. I thought, hey, possibly even an album. Turns out Egypt Station will come our way on September 7th. It is a 14-track LP. It's the first of Sir Paul McCartney's since 2013 when he put out new. That is coincidentally also when he called us here at EHM because he was listening to us play the new tracks, which was a really exciting time for us. Um, and um, what I find pretty interesting is the album was recorded. I always want to know where it was recorded, who produced it. Sort of just fills out the picture a little bit more before we actually get a chance to listen to it. Recorded in Los Angeles, London, and Sussex. 14 tracks on the album, 13 of which were produced by Greg Kirsten, who has just been absolutely on fire lately, producing the Foo Fighters, producing Beck, producing Adele. Uh, he's produced Paul before, so there's a little bit of history there. Uh, but I find it really interesting that he went with him all the way on uh, Egypt Station. Let's take a look at the press release that accompanied the uh, album's uh, first couple of singles. Uh, it describes the album uh, taking its name from one of McCartney's paintings. Elaborating further, Paul says in a statement, quote, I like the words Egypt Station. It reminded me of the album albums we used to make. Egypt Station starts off at the station on the first song, and then each song is like a different station. So it gave us some idea to base all the songs around that. I think of it as a dream location that the music emanates from. Uh, between the opening and closing instrumentals, Station 1 and Station 2, each song finds Paul capturing a place or moment before transporting the listener seamlessly to the next destination. Stops along the way include an acoustic meditation on present day contentedness in a track called Happy With You, a timeless anthem that would fit on virtually any album of any McCartney era, People Want Peace, and an epic multi movement closer clocking in at seven, closer, excuse me, clocking in at seven minutes with a song suit structure hacketing back to the days of Paul's previous combos despite repeated warnings. The result is a kaleidoscope journey through a myriad musical locales and eras, yet firmly rooted in the here and now with Paul's singular, unmistakable, melodic sensibility serving as a guide. I'm exhausted at how descriptive that actually was just now. That was ridiculously descriptive. Um, to coincide with the announcement, Paul has released 
two singles again two a side singles there's not a b side here i don't know which is very ballady and come on to me which is that little rocker that we got a taste of uh the last time we were talking about this when we described paul's um surprise show that he did uh you know we'll have links on our social for that but um i'm excited september 7th i mean it I'm going to be wishing this summer away because I want to get to the new material right away. But uh, regardless, I'm still pretty excited about it.